Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pod, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to go through an exercise involving isomerism and comparing boiling points. Alright, so the question is here, in which pair do the isomers have identical boiling points? So we have four options here. Option A, which are optical isomers. Option B, which are cis-trans isomer. Option C and D will be classified as chain isomers. Later when we draw out the structure, it is more obvious, so we can talk about it later. Now involving boiling points, what we will have to keep in mind is boiling point it is a physical property, so the factors affecting boiling point will be involving things like whether it can form hydrogen bond, does it have the presence of OH bond, NH bond, or FH bonds. But in organic chemistry, usually we don't encounter fluorine containing compounds that can form hydrogen bond because if fluorine is attached to carbon, then there's no way this fluorine can be attached to hydrogen to be able to form hydrogen bond. So in organic chemistry, species that can form hydrogen bond, usually we will look out for OH bond and NH bonds. Then sometimes we will have to consider whether the species it is polar or not, and it will have a certain degree of permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction, and if that molecule it is just a hydrocarbon, that means essentially it just contains non-polar carbon-carbon bonds and non-polar carbon-hydrogen bonds, then the dominant intermolecular interaction for non-polar species will be instantaneous dipole-induced dipole interaction. Some of us will call this dispersion forces or van der Waals forces. Then from there we can use concepts involving intermolecular forces or chemical bonding to compare the strength of all this intermolecular interaction and of course comparing the boiling point. So it requires us to be familiar with certain concepts in intermolecular force and we apply this idea to isomerism in organic chem. So let us run through each of these options. Now the first option, option A, this is pretty easy right because these two guys are mirror images of each other and if I notice the carbon it is actually chiral carbon bonded to four different groups. This carbon it is bonded to a methyl group, CH2Cl, a chlorine, and a hydrogen. So this carbon it is chiral. And this guy it is the mirror image of this guy. So they are optical isomers. And we know that optical isomers, they will have identical properties, same density, same melting point, same boiling point. The only difference between optical isomers in terms of the physical property will be its optical activity. Now optical activity, it is the ability for optical isomers to rotate plane polarized light. So for example, if this optical isomer is capable of rotating light 5 degree clockwise, then the mirror image will be able to rotate light 5 degree but counterclockwise. Same extent but opposite direction. Otherwise, the rest of the physical properties are identical for optical isomers. So for this question, actually it is very easy. Straight away, we know that the answer will be A because optical isomers should have identical boiling points. Now next for B. Now B, if I consider these two isomers, since they draw me the actual position of the groups with respect to my alkene, then obviously we will have to consider cis-trans isomerism, right? Now the criteria for cis-trans isomerism is for both carbons, which is part of the alkene, each of these carbon must be bonded to two different groups. Then you will have cis-trans isomerism. So this carbon is attached to a CH3 and a hydrogen, two different groups. This carbon is attached to a CH3 and a hydrogen, also two different groups. Usually what we will do is we will focus or highlight the bulkier group, which is in terms of size or MR, the one which is bigger or bulkier. We will highlight the group and we consider the position of these two groups, whether they are on the same side or opposite side and then I can decide whether this is a cis or a trans isomer. Now, if the bulky groups are on the same side, that means this bulky group and the other bulky group and the double bond forms a C, then this isomer will be the cis isomer because the C is here. So this will be the cis isomer. If the two groups are on opposite sides, then this will be the trans isomer. Now, what is the difference in terms of physical property? between my cis isomer and my trans isomer. Now, if I want to compare boiling point, then this is pretty easy because you notice the position of the bulky group, it is on the same side. So if I consider the cis isomer, the cis isomer is a little bit more loop-sided or less 
symmetrical because the electron clouds are all distributed on top and there are less electron clouds at the bottom. So we say that the cis isomer it is slightly more polar because the distribution of the electron clouds is less even or more irregular. So this guy is slightly more polar. You have a certain degree of permanent dipole, permanent dipole attraction. So therefore the boiling point is slightly higher. Now, whereas if I consider my trans isomer because the bulky groups are on opposite sides, so this is a little bit more symmetrical. If it is more symmetrical, then the distribution of the electron cloud is also more symmetrical and well distributed. So this is less polar. It doesn't really have permanent dipole, permanent dipole attraction. So the boiling point will be slightly lower. Now, if I consider cis trans isomerism, we use this idea to compare the boiling point. Even though, technically speaking, both of them are hydrocarbons, and if they are hydrocarbons, then in principle, both of them should be nonpolar. Dominant intermolecular interaction should be instantaneous dipole, induced dipole interaction. But again, if I want to compare the boiling point between cis and trans isomer, then of course we will have to focus on the difference between the cis isomer and the trans isomer. Now, boiling point wise, I think we have talked about it. But the interesting thing about the cis isomer and the trans isomer physical property is its melting point trend. Because the cis isomer is more polar, so therefore it has a higher boiling point, but it actually has a lower melting point as compared to the trans isomer. Now, why is it the case is because my cis isomer it is less symmetrical. So in the solid state, it is harder for me to stack or pack my cis isomers closely together. So in the solid state, the cis isomers will be slightly further apart. So the attraction between your cis isomers will be weaker and correspondingly, you will have a lower melting point. Now, if I consider the trans isomer because it is more symmetrical, so in the solid state, you can stack them closely together. So the attraction between my trans isomer will be stronger. So the melting point for the trans isomer will be higher. Now, this difference in the boiling point and melting point is interesting. So Usually, when we run through cis trans isomerism and when we talk about the difference in physical property, usually this idea will be highlighted. So the cis isomer, it has a higher boiling point but lower melting point, while the trans isomer has a lower boiling point but a higher melting point. Now, how about option C? Now, option C, if we draw out the arrangement of my carbon, then you look something like this. Now, both of them are alcohols. This is a four carbon straight chain alcohol. So this is butanol or butane one or to be specific. Now this carbon chain is actually three carbon chain and there's a carbon attached to the second position. So this would be a two methyl propane. And the OH group again, it is on the first carbon. So this is two methyl propane one or. Now by right, both of these guys should be able to form hydrogen bonds because of the OH bonds present, but since the difference between them, it is the carbon chain. So therefore, we will focus on the difference. Now, if I consider straight chain for carbon, it is less branch. The surface area will be greater. So if the surface area it is larger than the interaction with the neighbors, they will have bigger surface area to interact with a neighbor. So the attraction between the molecule will tend to be stronger. The boiling point will tend to be higher. If I compare this guy here, the 2 methyl propane one all because it is more branch, so therefore the surface area will be smaller. The more branch it is, then it will be more spherical, so you have a smaller surface area. Then the surface area for interaction with the neighbor will be less, and it will cause the attraction between molecules to be weaker, and therefore the boiling point will be lower. Again, this idea actually doesn't really apply to hydrogen bond, between molecules because these two guys, the dominant intermolecular interaction should be hydrogen bond. But again, since the extent of the branching of my carbon chain is the only difference between these two guys, then we will have to focus on the difference and we try to figure out why is there a difference in the boiling point between the first alcohol and the second alcohol. Now, finally for option D, option D, this is a little bit more straightforward because this is alkene versus alkene. If I draw out the arrangement of the carbon, this is straight chain six carbon hexane. Then if I draw out this guy, this is a uh, four carbon, a butane with a methyl group on position two and another methyl group on position three. So this will be two, three dimethyl butane. Of course, if I compare these two guys, this is unbranched. 
so the surface area will be greater and if the surface area it is larger then the surface area for molecular interaction with the neighbor will be greater the id-id attraction between molecules will be stronger so therefore the boiling point for this guy will be higher now conversely this is more branch so therefore it will be more spherical smaller surface area for molecular interaction with a neighbor the id-id attraction will be weaker so therefore the boiling point for this guy will be lower all right so that was the discussion involving isomerism and comparing boiling points so if you have learned something useful from this video please give me the thumbs up like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel for more weekly video lessons that's all for now thanks for watching